there's a lot of talk about engine temperature management in all phases of flight. This time in the ABS hangar, keep your engine cool. The engines in ABS-type airplanes are air-cooled. According to Continental Motors, about 80% of your engine's cooling effectiveness in cruise flight comes from the flow of air around the cylinders. 10 to 15% of engine cooling is the result of oil collecting internal heat and then dissipating that heat through the oil cooler. About 5% of the engine's cooling in cruise flight is a result of excess fuel, or excess air, retarding combustion in the cylinders and affecting the heat they develop. Put another way, if the baffles are good and the oil system is filled and working properly, you can fine-tune the resulting CHTs with changes in mixture setting. But if the baffles leak, the cow flaps are closed when they should be open, or the oil system is not working correctly, the engine will overheat no matter what you do with the mixture control. In climb, much less air is flowing into the engine compartment. The amount of oil in flight is fixed, and with less airflow, the oil cooler is less effective. Consequently, the fuel-air ratio plays a much larger part in overall cooling during climb. This is why fuel flows are set very high for takeoff and climb power, and the mixture must be leaned substantially for cruise flight. Let's look closer at the components of engine cooling and how you can affect engine temperatures in flight. Good engine baffles are critical to engine temperature control. Baffles are the combination of metal bulkheads and rubber or silicon strips that form a nearly airtight seal around the engine and the closed cowling. Baffles trap inlet airflow and force it down and around the cylinders. They also slow the air down increasing the air pressure on the top of the engine relative to that in the lower engine compartment. The low pressure under the engine pulls the higher pressure upper cowling air down and around the cylinders as well. Internally, your engine uses oil flow to cool the engine. Oil cooling is especially important for cooling the engine's bottom end. To remove heat absorbed as oil moves through the hot engine, Oil flows through an oil cooler. Part of the engine's cooling air is allowed to escape through the oil cooler to dissipate the oil's heat. This is the major reason the Continental No. 2 cylinders often run hotter than the rest. Because air is flowing through the oil cooler, less cooling air is forced around the back side of the left side rearmost cylinder. There's a flat baffle plate ahead of the forward cylinder. This prevents the high-speed air entering the engine compartment from making a sharp turn to flow over the front side of the foremost number 6 cylinder. That's why the Continental number 6 cylinder also often runs hotter than the others. Modifications exist to better cool the number 6 cylinder by adding a small duct in the metal baffle ahead of the number 6 cylinder so air flows directly onto its front side. A simple, elegant, an effective solution. Cooling air on the right side of the airplane passes around the alternator to at least part of the front side of the forward cylinder. That's why no one has created a modification to cool the number five cylinder. It usually isn't needed. ABS airplanes have devices to increase the cooling airflow in the engine compartment during low airflow phases of flight, especially during climb. These devices deflect slipstream airflow around the outside of the cowling. This creates low pressure air behind the deflection. This low pressure draws air more efficiently out of the cowling and therefore increases the amount of air flowing inside to cool the engine. Beach recommends that cow flaps be open for all ground operation continually during climb and as needed in cruise or maneuvering flight. Cow flaps are generally not needed in cruise. 
Various styles of cooling louvers have been employed over the years. These fixed openings on the sides of the cowling do the same thing as cow flaps, but on a more limited scale. Open cow flaps increase the airflow around the cylinders, so they also increase the drag. This is called cooling drag and is significant enough to reduce true airspeed by as much as 5 to 7 knots in cruise. So unless your engine is running hot, close your cow flaps as you level off and leave them closed all the way through landing. Lastly, what you do with the mixture control also impacts the engine's cooling, or at least that of the cylinders. Much discussion surrounds using fuel flow to control engine temperatures, and we'll cover that in detail in a separate program. If you have difficulty keeping your engine cool, the first thing you should do is ensure that the baffles are in good shape. Remember, this is an air-cooled engine. Even tiny leaks or gaps in the engine baffles have a major impact on engine temperatures. Fix the baffles first, if needed, and then address the way you lean the engine. Increase indicated airspeed if needed. For example, lower the nose and climb at a higher airspeed. Open cowl flaps if necessary in high altitude or high power crews. We've talked a lot about keeping cylinders cool without defining what too hot means. Continental Motors sets the maximum or red line cylinder head temperature for IO 520s and IO 550s at 460 degrees Fahrenheit. It's commonly suggested that a maximum recommended cylinder head temperature is 380 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 195 degrees Celsius. There have been many reasons given for this recommendation over the years. But why is 380 degrees considered good? and 381 degrees considered bad? The answer? The 380 degree Fahrenheit 195 degrees Celsius recommendation is an extremely conservative figure to provide a substantial margin below cylinder redline. Consequently, treat 380 degrees Fahrenheit or 195 degrees Celsius not as a new cylinder head temperature redline but instead as the bottom end of a CHT caution range, or yellow arc. Consider it an action temperature. If any of the CHTs exceed this minimum cautionary temperature, do something to cool it down, or at least keep it from getting much warmer. If you're climbing, this means ensuring the cow flaps are fully open and lowering the attitude a degree or two to increase indicated airspeed and therefore cooling airflow. In cruise or maneuvering flight, this may mean leaning the mixture further if operating lean of peak EGT, or enriching it more if operating on the rich side of peak EGT. Just as it is okay to operate in the yellow airspeed arc in some cases, if your engine is running smoothly and well, and one or more cylinder is a little over the lower end of the caution range, you may not need to do anything at all. Most engine analyzers permit the owner to set his or her own engine temperature alarms. Many use the 380 degree Fahrenheit 195 degree Celsius recommendation as an alarm setting. That's how we have set up the ABS Air Safety Foundation A36. In some operating conditions and phases of flight, oil temperature becomes as much an issue as cylinder temperature control. This is especially true when practicing slow flight and other reduced speed maneuvers. It also occurs in turbocharged and turbonormalized airplanes flying in the flight levels, where much less cooling airflow is available and indicated airspeeds are low. To recap, your Beechcraft's engine is cooled primarily by air and depends on good baffles and cooling airflow to maintain desirable operating temperatures. Oil cooling is essential as well. Given good air and oil cooling, you can fine-tune cylinder temperature with the mixture. Manage airflow, manage fuel flow, and continually monitor the engine. This video is part of the American Bonanza Society's Beechcraft Essential Systems and Techniques course, free to members in the ABS Online Learning Center. Log in or become a member 
at bonanza.org. Don't miss another edition of The ABS Hangar. Subscribe to the American Bonanza Society YouTube channel. We'll see you next time in The ABS Hangar. <laughs>